It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. More recently on Instagram, Simon Pegg has made comments about the Godzilla franchise. So without further hesitation, let's respond to the video. Uh, Godzilla Minus One is now on Netflix, so if you haven't seen it, watch it. It's the single best Godzilla movie since Shin Godzilla. It's incredible. Don't... It, it's a proper Godzilla movie made by the people who... who... sired Godzilla from their subconscious as they wrestled with... the, the massive ramifications of what happened during the Second World War. It's not some rock and sock and fucking cultural appropriation. When I saw that video for the first time, Simon Pegg came off to me as a Taurus. That is to say, it seemed as though he has no idea about the history of the franchise. He probably has no idea about other movies in the franchise. And thus, his opinion is probably based upon one or two movies plus the multiverse that he basically talked about within the video. So, before I respond to the argumentation, what exactly is the definition of cultural appropriation as, I guess, defined by Simon Begg right here? The definition goes as follows. Cultural appropriation takes place when members of a majority group adopt cultural elements of a minority group in an exploitative, disrespectful, or stereotypical way. To fully understand the history of Godzilla, we need to go back to King Kong. Now, King Kong was first released back in 1933. Now, there's like a lot of achievements that that particular movie had for its time period. For example, the special effects that it used were pretty much incredible for that standard because it used like a lot of techniques. It used like stop motion animation it used rear projection, it used compositing shots. It was like one of the first ever movies ever that actually used music for a score because back then, films did not necessarily have scores as part of the soundtrack. And so there's like a lot of things that was like a first time ever for that particular movie back in 1933. Besides being inspired by Beauty and the Beast, there was also the fact that the original creator of King Kong was also inspired by a real life fight between a Komodo dragon and a gorilla. Cooper was naturally friends with William Douglas Burden, the first explorer who established the Department of Animal Behavior at the American Museum of Natural History. In 1926, Burden and his first wife traveled to the Dutch East Island of Komodo where the Burden Young Avenger be the first white man to ever capture the creature he nicknamed King Komoto. He was impressively and seamlessly cruelly brought back two of the impressive creatures to the United States and gave them to the Bronx Zoo. Sadly, both died shortly thereafter, unable to survive in captivities. Besides formerly alive giant lizards, Burden also brought back many as tale about these prehistoric creatures to his friend Cooper, who got excited and thought it would be really cool if we made this gorilla movie to have them fight with a Komodo dragon. So the whole entire genesis of the monster movie is the fact that the creator of King Kong thought it would be cool to see a Komodo dragon fight a gorilla. And since then, King Kong was so incredibly influential to many people and filmmakers worldwide. It was influential to Ray Harryhausen, and Ray Harryhausen would actually work with Willis O'Brien to create the special effects for Mighty Joe Young. He would also later create many other movies, but one of the most famous movies back in the 1950s was something that was known as the Beast from 20,000 Phantoms. Another person that was directly inspired by King Kong was the special effects director, A.C. Superaya. And A.C. Superaya would be the director for special effects for many Godzilla movies and Ultraman shows throughout his life. Besides the fact that A.G. Superaya was directly influenced from King Kong, basically Godzilla had direct influence from the Beast of 20,000 Phantoms. 
another influence directly for the Godzilla franchise was the fact of the whole entire Lucky Dragon incident. So the argumentation goes as follows. Premise 1. The origin of King Kong came directly from the fact that the creator had an inspiration of a fight between a Komodo dragon and a gorilla. Premise 2. King Kong was successful and inspired many filmmakers to make their own particular spin of the same story. Premise 3. Godzilla was inspired by American monster movies. Premise 4. Godzilla had fights with other monsters within the franchise. And the final premise, the monster verse had inspiration for those Japanese movies. And in short, basically when it comes down to my argumentation, what I'm trying to say right here is that without King Kong, there's no Godzilla. And without Godzilla, there's no monster verse movies. In short, America was inspired by Japanese movies, and the Japanese were inspired by American movies. Oh, it's not some rock and sock and fucking cultural appropriation. When I hear comments like this, it come across as incredibly misinformed because it shows that Simon Pegg has not studied the history of Godzilla movies, have not studied the history of King Kong, and have not studied the history of the MonsterVerse. So what do you guys think about my argumentation? Tell me in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I won't train him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.